Welcome back to my series of tutorials on how to create mods for the Bounty of Isaac. If you haven't seen the previous episode where we learned about how costumes work, you can view it by clicking the button in the top right corner. In this video, you'll learn everything you need to know about creating a custom character. This includes a stage transition portrait, a co-op selection icon, a character selection sprite, null costumes, a floor tutorial, and starting items. There will also be a second part to this video that will go over some extra things that are outside the scope of this one. Our custom character will be named Gabriel. Gabriel is an angel that will start with holy water, and will leave a trail of holy water creep wherever he walks. Just like how costumes have very specific Anim 2 structures, characters have very specific Anim 2s that need to be named and presented in very specific ways. Because of this, I have opted to create a template for this character setup which can be found as the first link in the description and as a pinned comment. To start, go to the GitHub repository linked in the description where the template is hosted and click this bright green code button. Then hit download a zip from the dropdown menu and extract a zip file into your mods folder. I've already done this, so I won't be doing it again. Once extracted, feel free to delete the readme.md and git attributes files, as they're not necessary. And that's it, the template is set up. First, go into your content folder and open the players.xml file. Okay, there's a lot here and I'm going to be explaining each segment. Similar to how other XML files are set up, we have a root tag. This tag is named players. The players tag has a few attributes that determine the file paths of where the game will look for certain things. First here we have root. This determines where the game will look for your character's sprite sheets. Next is portrait root. This determines where the game will look for your character's portrait for stage transitions and boss fight versus screens. Lastly is name image root. This determines where the game will look for the sprite for your character's name in boss fight versus screens. All right, next we have the actual player tag that defines the player. Since the player tag has a lot of attributes, I've made a new line for each one instead of having them all in one line. This is to increase readability. Anyway, the first attribute is name. This is the name of your character internally, and you'll use this to get its character ID later on. It's also displayed on the versus text when fighting a mini boss. Next is skin. This is a sprite sheet for your character. This part is where things start to get a little bit complicated, so I'm gonna take a bit of a detour to explain how the character sprite works. Sometimes costumes can change the skin color of Isaac. For example, Anti-gravity makes you blue, while SMB superfan makes you red. The skin color change isn't done automatically though, as the game requires you to have a separate sprite sheet for every skin color. This simply means you need a sprite sheet for the default skin color, along with the separate ones for red, green, gray, white, blue, and black. To showcase what I mean, let's go see the different sprite sheets. Head to Resources, then GFX, then Characters, and open the folder named Costumes. Here's where the spreadsheets go. You can see all the spreadsheets for Gabriel here. They're the exact same except with different skin colors. Notice how the default skin color's name has no suffix to it, while the other ones have things like underscore black and underscore blue. Opening up the sprite sheet in an art program of your choice, you'll notice there are a lot of sprites here and they're organized in a very specific way. The game needs each sprite to be aligned just as they are. Back to the sprite sheet here, the top left has the sprites for shooting down, up, and to the side. Additionally, we have all the walk animations here. You'll notice that these sprites don't have the hair or stole that Gabriel usually has. This is to make it compatible with costumes. If we put the hair on the head sprite, then any costume that affects the head can overlap the hair, which would look weird in most circumstances. 
So what we do instead is make the hair a new costume known as a null costume, which is a costume that isn't associated by any item. I'll go into more detail about null costumes later. Every other sprite besides the walking and shooting sprites do have the stolen hair. This is because these sprites are a part of animations that hide all the costumes anyway. The top right here has the sprites for when you're holding and walking with an item. This head right here on the top is completely unused, but the head here on the bottom is. All the sprites here are part of the extra animations that the player can play, like dying, teleporting, and jumping. The bottom left sprites are a part of the glitch animation that the item missing no uses. And finally, the white teleport animations here are actually unused in repentance. All right, now that I've explained the sprite sheet, let's go back to the XML. Next is name image. This is a sprite for your character's name in the boss fight versus screen. The sprite is located at resources, GFX, UI, boss. The name image is usually 192 by 64 pixels in resolution. Next is Portrait. This is the sprite that appears in a boss fight versus screen and during a stage transition. I've put it in resources slash gfx slash ui slash stage because that's where we define the portrait route to point towards. Portrait sprites are usually 144 by 144 pixels in resolution. All right, now let's head to skin color. In my case, the ID for the skin color I want to use is negative one, which is Isaac's default skin tone. But you can see all the options by checking the documentation for the players.xml linked in the description. As you can see, there are a bunch of different attributes you can add to edit things such as HP, keys, and more. For now, the only important thing I want to show you is items. Items is a list of item IDs separated by commas. This only accepts vanilla item IDs, so if you want to add a modded item, you'll have to do that through code, which we'll go over in the second part of this tutorial, not in this video. I only wanted to add the item Holy Water, so I put its item ID, which is 178. I finished explaining the players.xml, but that isn't all there is to setting up the character in general. We will still need to handle the co-op icon, character selection sprite, last will, or death menu name, and finally, we need to implement the null costumes that I talked about earlier. I've already set up everything in this template, so I'm just going to go over it like I did for players.xml. Let's start with the co-op icon. Open up your content folder in your mod's main directory and see the folder in there named GFX. This GFX folder is where all sprites that are added to the game that are handled by the game itself go. So, for example, item death portrait sprites go here, as well as the co-op icon sprites. Let's open it up now. Either navigate to the animation editor in the game's main directory slash tools slash Isaac animation editor. Or, if you've enabled the setting to associate anim2 files with the editor, double click the file. There's only one animation here, and it's the name of the character as I wrote it in the XML. It needs to be the exact same or else it won't work. Clicking on this animation shows the text that shows under your character on the character select menu. It's in a very specific place so that it matches other characters. Clicking on any one of the frames shows you the sprite sheet that I'm using. Feel free to edit this anim2 and the spreadsheet however you want. All right, closing out of that, open characterportraits.anim2. Once again, you'll see the animation named Gabriel, which should be changed to the exact name of your character. This one's pretty simple though. It should just be the portrait of your character perfectly centered in the middle of the animation. You may need to edit the cropping of that single keyframe there, depending on the sprite you change this to. Leaving the main menu sprites, we have controls.anim2. The sprite should be centered as well, but you also have these green null layers that you can adjust. 
These layers are basically just positions that tell the game where to place certain things. So bomb here would show up as the key E for players who haven't changed their controls yet. Exiting out of that, let's move on to the co-op menu. This is just as simple as character portraits.anim2. The name of your character is the animation name and the center of the sprite. Okay, almost there. The very last anim2 I need to show you is the death screen anim2. This one is positioned in a very specific spot. This spot is where Isaac's name usually appears on the death screen. Feel free to adjust it slightly if your character's name sprite is a different length than mine. Okay, now to explain null costumes. Null costumes are like any other costume, with the only difference being that they're only applied to a character through Lua code, and that they're declared a little bit differently in the costumes 2 to XML. Because I already showed how costumes work and how to make them in the previous tutorial, I'm not going to be doing that today, and instead I will show you how to define them in the XML. Go back to your content folder and open up costumes2.xml. In here you'll see two costumes. One for Gabriel's stoles, and one for his hair. The main thing you need to notice here is that the type is set to none. This is what makes it a null costume. I also have the priority set pretty high. That's just so that these costumes appear above other costumes on the same layer. This is something that's also done by vanilla character null costumes. All right, here comes the most complicated part, the code. We need to do Lua code to make the character have the null costumes. Let's open the folder by either right clicking and selecting open with code or by launching Visual Studio Code and navigating to the folder yourself. Okay, there is a lot of code here, but only the first 16 lines of this code are actually necessary for adding a null costume. The rest of the code is what makes Gabriel's passive effect of spawning holy water creep wherever he walks work. It also handles lowering his base damage by 0.6. I will not be covering those lines of code as it's outside the scope of this tutorial. But they're heavily commented on, so you can look through the template yourself and learn that way. All right, let's go line by line. Line one here registers the mod, allowing us to easily create callbacks, which let us interact with the specific events in the game. The next line gives us the player type or identification number of the character. We can use this number to check if a player is our character and run code if it is. The next two lines just get the IDs of the null costumes. They require the full path to the costume, starting from resources and including the file extension of .anim2. Okay, this last bit is what actually adds the costumes. First, I defined a function named giveCostumesOnInit. This function can be named anything, but it should be kept descriptive to what it actually does. The event we're going to be using provides the players the first and only argument, so I've written player here. In this function, there's an if statement. This if statement is checking if the player's type is not the same as Gabriel's type. So like I said earlier, it is basically checking if the player isn't Gabriel. If it isn't Gabriel, it runs the code inside the if statement. All that code is, is the word return. Return lets us end the function right then and there. Here, we're using it so that the rest of the code won't run if the player is not Gabriel. This is called an early return, where you use a return to end your function early. It's primarily used to keep code readable, as having a bunch of if statements inside of if statements inside of if statements gets really confusing really quick. These last two lines simply add the null costumes. Line 12 is for the hair costume, and line 13 is for the stoles costume. Don't forget an end to end the function. And to wrap it all up, line 16 adds the callback, also known as our function, to the event that runs when the player is initialized or first created. Remember, when adding a callback, you reference the function with a dot and not a colon like you usually do. 
All right, with that all said, let's go view the character in game. All right, it's here in the menu. And selecting him correctly applies the costumes as well as the other code that I did not go over in this video. My controller is plugged in and pressing start shows us Gabriel as an option. Opening up the developer console by pressing the tilde key or colloquially known as the squiggly line on your keyboard and typing G space K5 will give us the emperor card. While I'm at it, I'm gonna type debug 10, which will instantly kill enemies in the room. Now let's go to the boss. As you can see, my boss portrait sprite is there. The boss portrait transition sprite is the same as the trap door transition sprite. And looking at the last will screen, you will see Gabriel. So that's it. Thanks so much for watching and I apologize for taking so long to make this video. Uh, once again, you can find the template in the description as well as a playlist for every tutorial. And lastly, my Discord server if you need any help. See ya.